Crossovers are all of the rage nowadays. The days of sedans and hatchbacks being at the top of the sales charts is basically over and everyone has accepted the fact that crossovers are the big boys. So with a brand like Nissan which is trying very hard to keep its head above the water, not going into that segment is basically suicide. So they created this, the all new Magnite SUV. So this thing is basically what Nissan has to compete against the venue, breads and everything like that. So today, we're going to find out if this thing can actually ball with the big boys. The Magnite is a very crucial vehicle in Nissan's lineup currently. It is the last chance at appealing to the Indian customer and actually saving the company from exiting our market. Anyone knows the easiest way to give competition in any sort of business is to undercut the game by a large margin. And Nissan has done just that. Most comparable Magnite models to the Venue or the Sonnet are almost 2 lakh rupees cheaper which instantly triggers the Marwadi side of our brain. The top model of the Magnite which is the Turbo CVT Premium Optional DT, yeah, quite a long name, compared to the venue's top model, the SX Plus Sport DCT, is 9.59 lakhs before taxes, compared to the Hyundai's 11.66 lakhs respectively. Yeah, quite a big gap. And there is more good news. The Magnite, in my opinion, in the looks department, trumps each and every other crossover in the segment. Whereas other manufacturers use body kits, spoilers, wheels, color accents and other irrelevant stuff to make the car look good. The Magnite actually has some thought in its design. That's why it looks good even in the base variant. The front fascia is very aggressive and very pointy. It has these sleek headlights up front with these vertical slatted DRLs. You have a massive gaping grille and overall the front fascia is very attractive. And that's the thing. It's not like an Indian knockoff of some Japanese car. It looks like a proper Japanese car from the front end. Everything in the looks department is simple yet aggressive. It has the right amount of design characteristics, unlike the Korean brands which take 10 designers and incorporate all of their ideas at the same time. The wheels on this manual top model look fantastic. These are the optional diamond cut 16 inch alloys which you get relatively early in the Magnite variant list. The side profile looks very sporty with the roof slightly tapering off at the back to give it that coupe look but the back end is where things get a little meh. It looks okay, there's nothing wrong with it but it just looks like a jazzed up XUV300 at the back. You know what I mean? Step inside the interior of the Magnite and this is where things get a little bit rocky for me. Uh, since this car is from the Renault-Nissan alliance, a lot of the switchgear used in this car is shared with a lot of Renault cars like the Quid and the newly launched Kyger. The interior is pretty good, it's not too bad but there are a few things that Nissan could have done to jazz this interior up a little. Add a little bit of ambient lighting here and there, add a little bit more of the exterior body colors on the inside over here on the central console and all of that would have added up to become a very nice looking interior but mainly one thing that they should have changed is this instrument cluster it looks so immature i mean it's not even a joke so all these little changes could have added up to make this interior much better than it is right now quality is relatively good much better than previous renault and nissan products the plastics aren't up to the level of their Korean competition, but it is bearable although you can hear a fair bit of creaking and knocking. The infotainment system is also bearable, it has no sort of intuitive feeling on the normal UI. But once you start Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you don't seem to find any lag or weird quirks. Voice control works beautifully, making the task of calling or setting up new destinations on the maps super simple. Nissan has given JBL speakers with this car but unfortunately, they are nowhere near as good as the other manufacturers. The steering is a very safe three-spoke wheel design with a plethora of buttons on top. Everything from your cruise control buttons and volume up-down buttons are located on the steering. The AC controls though are very special in my opinion. 
The toggle switches between the scroller wheels for airflow and temperature look very similar to the GTR's R Dynamic button. Just like many other manufacturers nowadays, Nissan has completely ditched the diesel option. So yeah, if you want a Magnite, you cannot buy a diesel Magnite. But fear not, if you want a powerful and talky engine, Nissan has you sorted out. This is the Magnite Turbo. So you get a 1 litre, 3 cylinder turbocharged engine which has a sufficient 100 horsepower and 160 Nm of torque. So if you're in the power band and if you have the turbo spooled up, this thing squats and goes. And funnily enough, this thing is very old JDM car -y, like in the sense that Till 2000-2500 RPM, there is literally no power in the engine at all. But once that turbo spools up, you are shot off into the distance. Not that dramatically as something as like a R34 or a proper GTR. But I mean, for what it is, the Magnite Turbo is actually quite impressive. There are a few things that are not so great about the driving experience. One is this gear shifter over here. It is pretty similar to the gear shifter you find in a Renault Quid or a Renault Kyger or any other modern Renault that you find nowadays. So the gear shift is a little bit clunky, it's not very natural, so that's a little bit disappointing. Uh, but the car in terms of its driving capabilities is quite good because the suspension is stiff and it is abnormally stiff for a car like this so if you're looking for comfort or anything of that sort cannot be at the top of that list but if you're talking about a crossover that handles pretty well well the nissan magnite turbo can handle like a little hot hatch i mean it's not as poised or as planted on the ground when you go into a corner but compared to other crossovers like the nexon or the venue or anything like that this thing actually is a little pocket rocket in that sense only if they could change one thing in this car, I would be a big, big fan of this thing. This instrument cluster, that is the main thing that bothers me. I mean, it's so immature. It looks like a child has designed it, a little five-year-old has designed it. And if that one thing could have been changed and a few ambient lights here and there and just a few more nice touches around the car i think so this would have been one of my favorite cars in the segment because first of all i'm a big nissan fanboy i want nissan to be successful in countries like india so that we can get the good stuff like the 400z which is expected to launch this year but if nissan doesn't sell enough magnites then i don't think that the 400z will come to india and that is a big problem for us car enthusiasts what are my final verdicts on the nissan magnite turbo well it is a decent product it's a great jab at the crossover segment and if you want a crossover that has a lot of space inside it decently good features not as much as the koreans but has a price tag that is significantly lower than them well the nissan magnite should be at the top of your list because even though this thing might not be perfect it is still worth a consider Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, like it and share it with your friends. Subscribe to our channel and do check out our latest YouTube series which is called Road to Valley Run. In that series, we are basically building race cars for the drag strip. So we've taken cars like the Polo GT TSI, Octavia VRS, Laura 1.8 TSI, classic tuner cars for India and we've done some great modifications to them. So if you're interested in content like that, please check out Road to Valley Run, which is a new series on YouTube. It'll be coming soon on our channel, so stay tuned for that.